In this section, we're going to take a look at the solutions to the flow exercises. So if you haven't had a chance to do these yet, just go back to the previous video and have a go at um, implementing the token issue flow. So we have our flow test here that we're going to run on a mock network. And so if you remember from the last video, the first test is this transaction constructed by flow uses the correct notary test. And the way we're going to test this is just by running the token issue flow, getting back the signed transaction, and then checking that the notary of the output state was indeed the uh, notary of the mock network. So you can take a look at that here. So here we basically just need to make a transaction builder and pass it the notary it's constructor. So here we say new transaction builder notary. Um, that's one way to do it. You can also create the transaction builder without a notary and then say transaction builder dot notary set notary and pass in the notary there. Either way is fine. And so this transaction builder has a builder syntax, so you can, um, there's no need to assign this to a new variable. It's a mutable object for now until we sign it. So this adds the notary to the transaction builder. And then our next test is this test here, which is transaction constructed by flow has one token state output with the correct amount and owner. So what we need to do here is create our output state and then add it to the transaction builder. And so here we're going to create the transaction, the token state here. And if you remember, the arguments here are just passed in in the constructor. So the reason for this is it allows to parameterize the flow. So it allows you to issue any token to anyone for any amount, um, as opposed to just being restricted to a specific owner and an amount, which would be the case if we had these owner and amount hard coded in the flow. So here I can just grab the owner and the amount and, and I also need to pass in the issuer. So in this case, the issuer is myself. So we've got a reference to the issuer up here. We've got this uh, helper function in flows called get our identity. And so here we've created a token state where we're the issuer, the owner is passed in as an argument and the amount is as well. And we create a token state based on that. Then all we need to do is say transaction builder dot add output state token state. There's one more thing we need to pass in here, and that's the contract we're going to use. So if you look at add output state, it requires a contract name as well as a state. And so here we're going to grab that from the token contract dot ID. If we go look at token contract, we see we have this ID string that points to the contract we're going to use for this state. Now this is just the name of the contract, not an instance of the contract. Uh, in practice, this will this string will automatically be resolved to the actual contract implementation. And if we carry on with our tests, you can see here, transaction constructed by flow has one output using the correct contract. So that's what we've done here. Uh, we've already added the correct contract and this next test is transaction constructed by flow has one issue command. And we also, if we look here, we can see the following tests are transaction constructed by flow has one command with the issuer as signer. And transaction constructed by flow has no inputs, attachments, or time windows. So you can do all of those at once. And so here, I'm just going to go and create this issue command. Sorry, in the issue flow, create the token issue command. So I can do that up here. So if I say uh, issue. new, um, there we go. So here I have my command object. And so I'm going to add that to the transaction builder. And so here we pass in the command, we also need to pass in a list of public keys who will be the signers. In this case, it's just the issuer key. So our key. And there we have it. So we've got a transaction builder. We've added the notary, the output state with its contract, the command with the public key. Um, and then here we have the command up here in the token state we've built ourselves. And we haven't added any um, we haven't added any inputs, attachments, or time windows. So everything should be fine. So we can just kick off our flows. And as we said, this will start one mock network and then run all the tests against that single mock network. So hopefully this will be relatively fast to run.
So there we go, all the tests have passed. And so you can see here we've got our full end-to-end -end flow. We've got, we pick a notary, we get our own identity as the issuer. We create the, the uh, fact we want to issue onto the ledger, this token state. We create the command we want to use in the transaction. Then we start a new transaction builder, set the notary, set the output state, add the command. We verify the transaction builder to make sure we haven't messed up and the transaction's invalid. And then we sign the transaction and we finalize it so we get it notarized and have it recorded. In summary, we've seen how flows allow us to automate the process of updating the quarter ledger and they can convert very complex business processes into single click operations. Under the hood, every flow is an instance of a class that implements the flow logic interface and a flow logic must have a call method that describes the series of operations that the flow will carry out. And a flow can really do anything it wants, but one of the key things you'll often do is want to update the ledger, and that'll involve building transactions. And whenever we want to build a transaction, we use the transaction builder class. That's the end of this section. In the next section, we'll look at running our core app.